reading today's scripture from Matthew. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my father who is in heaven. Encounters with Christ... What Anna just read was just before Jesus has chosen his disciples, he's chosen his followers, and he's sending them out, and he's telling them what to do, and in the middle of this, he's telling them, do not fear. We're looking at, we're fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. We're looking at how Jesus encounters humanity, and with that, we're asking ourselves, how should we respond to Christ, and how should we act? How should we emulate Christ? Today, we'll be talking about fear. Fear not. There's this story that I heard. I was probably in my early teens the first time I heard it. It was about a little girl, an illustration of faith and fear. The mother had just finished serving supper, and it was time to clean up Sandy. And, and so, so she told her daughter, she said, I, I left the broom outside around the corner on the front porch. Would you go outside and get it? And the little girl responded, Mommy, Mommy, it's, it's dark outside. I don't like the dark. I don't want to go outside and get it. And the mother says, Baby doll, don't you know that God is everywhere? He's always with you, and he's outside in the dark, too. There's nothing to be afraid of. And the very smart little girl walks to the door she opens it a little bit and she sticks her hand outside and opens it real wide and says, Jesus, since you're out there anyway, could you hand me the broom? <laughs> Encounters with Christ, fixing our eyes on the perfecter of our faith. Fear not. It's a problem that we have in our society. It's a problem that everyone has to deal with in their life. I, I love a story that Charles Spurgeon uh, wrote, and it was about a sword. There was a victorious king who rode into every battle with a sword, and every battle he won every single time. And this victorious king became very famous, but Jack, even more than the king, people started fearing his sword. All of his enemies thought if he brought that sword into the fight, into the battle, there was no defeating him. One day, a co-king in another land, a friendly king, inquired of the sword, may I look at it? May I touch it? May I see what's special about your sword? The victorious king sent this other king the sword by emissary. They took it and they studied it. They looked at its metal. They looked at its handles. They, they saw the, the carvings in it. He brought master blacksmiths in to look at what type of metal and how it had been made. They, they, they took artisans and, and, and people who, who knew of jewels and said, what, what's special about this sword? And after all was said and done and everything that they had looked at, 
they concluded that there was nothing special about the sword. The sword is quite ordinary. The sword was quite plain. They wrote back to the victorious king, we see nothing special or something mighty in your sword. And the king replied, the power is not in the weapon, but in the hand that holds it. This morning, if you think that you're going to go through life and not have any fear, if you think that you're all that, that you think that, that you're going to go through life and not fear anything because you're smart or you're pretty or you're strong or you have money or, or maybe you just have a really high IQ and you think that's going to get you through life without fear, you need to realize escaping fear is only accomplished by putting your faith in something greater than ourselves. Amen? God told Isaiah, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Church, I want, to look, I want you to look at this. Who's got the power? Isaiah or God? I am with you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Church, the power is not in you and I. And when we realize that the power is in the hand that holds us, we're quite plain. We're ordinary. It is only through God's power that we can walk through life without fear. He told Joshua, I have commanded you, be strong, be courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. David understood the reason not to be fearful. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation who shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? It is knowing who holds you. It is knowing in the power of the God that strengthens you that you can live life without fear. Thinking it's all about you is a formula for failure. Amen? Well, this, this begs the question, who and what should I fear? I like what this guy had to say. He, he lived about 550 B.C. His name is Sun Tuz. He wrote, I think, what is considered the greatest strategy book on war ever written. I, as far as I know, even still today in all the military schools, this is referred to and, and, and is, is the reading for many of the military tactics in modern warfare. He writes something I really like. He says, if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. So if I don't know myself and I don't know my enemy, I'm destined to lose. Coach, I think this is pretty good coaching material also. If you know yourself but not the enemy, every victory gained you will also suffer defeat. So, if I know myself, but I don't know my enemy, I'm going to lose some, I'm going to win some. But if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself and you know who your enemy is, likely you're not going to lose. And Jesus says, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. 
Rather, fear him who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Paul says the same thing in Ephesians 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of who, church? The devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. And don't let heavenly places throw you off. He's just meaning in spiritual places. I'm going to blow your mind right here. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against humanity. Humanity is not the enemy. Are you listening? Humanity is not the enemy. We're in a political season right now where everyone wants you to believe that the other guy is the enemy. And Jesus says, don't worry, don't fear who can kill the body. Worry about the one who can kill the body and the soul. Paul comes along and says, your your warring is not with the flesh. It is with the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Church, our enemy is the demonic rim that uses hate, greed, Prejudice, lust, insecurities, envy, pride, and vanity to destroy us. Those are our enemies. And Satan and demons are constantly using them against you. Jesus told us who the enemy was. It is the thief. And he comes to steal and kill and destroy. And Jesus came to give you life and give it to the full. Finally, tonight or today, I want us to realize not to fear hard things because they make you. That's hard, isn't it? Don't fear hard things they make you. Jesus says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And do not one of them fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs on your head are all numbered. It's getting easier and easier for God with my head. Fear not, therefore. You are more valued than many sparrows. Jesus wants his disciples to understand God is looking over you. God is watching you. God is, it knows you intimately. This is an interesting scripture. I'd never noticed this until I, until I started studying this subject. There's a story in Mark 6. Jesus feeds 5,000 people, and then he goes off and starts praying up on the mountain, but he sends his disciples into Bethsaida. And as his disciples start to go across the Sea of Galilee to Bethsaida, they start rowing, and the wind starts blowing. And what's really unique that I never, I never noticed before it was pointed out to me, Jack, is I want you to look up there. Jesus saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. Ain't that cool? They're out there rowing for their life in the water. They're struggling, and Jesus is watching them the entire time. It's not by accident they're out there. Jesus sent them out there for a reason. And he's watching over them as they struggle against something that's really tough and really hard. 
Now, it was his plan, Butch, just to walk past them so they could see him and go, oh, Jesus is walking on the water. What do we have to fear? But no, they were really fearful. Instead, they say, oh, look, it's a ghost. And Jesus has to walk up and say, no, guys, it's me. Be not afraid and climb in the boat to calm them down. But what I want you to see is sometimes God lets us struggle in the middle of a storm of life so that we might be better. James, the half-brother of Jesus, writes, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let the steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. You see, Butch, we become better people when we struggle against something and overcome it. Don't fear hard things. We talked about this Wednesday night. We said, what do you want your legacy to be? And we went around the room and everyone shared what they wanted their legacy to be. And church, you're not going to be remembered for the things that you avoided. You're going to be remembered for the things that you overcome, right? I mean, we think about David we think Goliath. We think Joshua. We think Wall of Jericho, right? Samson, the Philistines, Moses, Pharaoh. They're known for the things that they overcame through the power of God. We're not going to be remembered, church, for the things that we avoided. We're going to be remembered for the things that we got through. So don't avoid hard things. Church, are you listening to me? Don't avoid hard things. A calm sea never produced a good sailor. I like watching videos, YouTube videos, on people who sail. I find them interesting. I find the places that go, Jack, interesting. From Cairo to the tip of Patagonia, it's just beautiful places. I like to see what they encounter. But if you'll watch the videos, if you'll, if you'll look at their first month out on the sea, man, every time they see a storm coming, they get scared. They break out the maps. They look at the radar. They start running for a cove as quick as they can. You can see them almost panic. But if you'll fast forward, and you'll go maybe two, three. I'm watching some people right now that have been out there for six years with their family. When you watch, when you watch them now and a storm rolls up, they're as calm as a cucumber, Preston. Because they've been through it over and over again. They know how to batten down the hatches. They know how to quarter the sails. They know how to turn the boat just right so the sea is not against them. They, they know how to deal with the storms in their life. And the more that we deal with the storms in our life, the more that we can live without fear. So stop, stop avoiding hard things. And church, we need people who have gone through hard things. The world doesn't need any more travel agents. We need tour guides. Jack, you know the difference between a travel agent and a tour guide. A travel agent breaks out the brochures and reads the brochures and how beautiful the, the cruise ships are. And, and they, they look at the pictures of the palm trees and, and they see the, the volcanoes. They've never been there. They've never experienced it. They've never been on the cruise ship. They've never been out there with a the volcano. They've never climbed a palm tree in their life. I don't need that. Do you need that? What I need is a tour guide. I need somebody that's already been there and done that and made it through that. I want somebody who's already taken the machete and cut their way through the jungle so they could get to the other side. 
Because I know that person really knows. That person can be followed. Hebrews 4.15 tells us, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. What's that tell me? That tells me that Jesus has gone through the same storms of life that I'm going through. And he's my perfect tour guide. And there are some of you in here this morning who've gone through some awful, awful storms of life. And when it comes time to get through those, I talk to you. Your friends are going to come talk to you. Other people are going to come talk to you. You don't know how to get through depression until you've been depressed. You don't know how to get through a divorce until you talk to someone who's gone through a divorce. You don't know how, you don't know how to, to really get through death and dying until you come alongside someone who's experienced themselves. Church, don't avoid hard things. They make you. I want you to understand, Jesus says, fear not, fear not, fear not, three times in that little scripture that Anna just read a few minutes ago. But before this, he told you things are going to be rough. Jesus is a God of full disclosure, Butch, and I love that. Just a few scriptures before this, he says, hey, they're going to arrest you in the synagogues. They're going to flog you. They're going to arrest you, and they're going to put you in uncomfortable positions before kings and before governors, places that you don't want to go, people, places they're going to drag you, and they're going to whip the skin off the back of your hide. But fear not. You're more valuable than any sparrow and God doesn't let one touch the ground without knowing it. He's intimately involved in your life and knows every hair on your head. Fear not. Church, the storms of life are coming. If you've read the Sermon on the Mount, you know how it ends. Jesus says... The storms of life are coming and they are going to pound on your life. And if you live in fear, if you live with the world, if, if that is where you get your strength, the storms of life are going to come and it is going to wipe your house off the face of the map. Or, or you're going to set your foundation on Christ. You're going to set your foundation on God. You're going to set your foundation on the rock that never changes, that never moves, that's always consistent Jack day to day, that knows you intimately, that's watching over you while you strain at the oars. Church, let's not pray for easy lives, comfort, security, and a pain-free life because nobody grows in ease and comfort. Let's pray that we can meet life's challenges with the power of God, with the love of God, and with the courage to face the trials of life without fear. Let's pray, and the sermon will be yours. Dear Heavenly Lord, we are your people. We come to you for protection, for strength, for courage, for energy. Lord, some of us are so, so tired. We're exhausted. We've been beat down. We're wore out. But we know that you're watching us pull at the oars. We know that you are helping us become better people. Help us to engage the world with your love, your strength, and your power. In Jesus' name, amen.